A resistor is connected to a power supply. The potential difference across the resistor is 6 volts. Which of these corresponds to a potential difference of 6 volts? So 6 joules per ohm, 6 amps per coulomb, 6 joules per coulomb, 6 amps per ohm. So potential difference is basically how much energy is uh, stored within a certain packet of electrons we call a coulomb. So this, for example, is a coulomb of charge. This is a small packet of electrons or large packet of electrons, however you want to view it. And um, what, what happens is a power supply will transfer energy to this packet of electrons. So the energy is measured in joules and this is a coulomb um, of charge. So it's joules per coulomb. One volt is one joule per coulomb. Also, one watt in power is one joule per second, how much energy is transferred per second. So these are two units you need to understand that can be defined in two different ways. Voltage is joules per coulomb. Watts in power is joules per second. The resistor remains connected for a period of time. The current in the resistor is 200 milliamps. The t a total charge of 42 coulombs flows through the resistor. Calculate in minutes the time taken for this amount of charge to flow through the resistor. So we have current in milliamps. Be careful, that's not a standard unit. That will need to be converted to amps. Uh, we have charge, 42 coulombs, and calculate in, t in minutes the time taken. All right. So charge is current times time. We're trying to work out time in minutes. So once again, we can do our little rearranging technique. So for example, uh, if charge is six, current is three, time is two, and we wanna work out time, let's move time here, which is two. What do we do with six and three? Well, charge is six, current is three, six divided by three is two, so it stands to reason that charge divided by current is time, because we've locked these figures in. Um, now the second point is we have a unit conversion here. So if you remember that 1000 milliamps equals one amp. To convert amps to milliamps then it stands to reason that you divide by a thousand because 1000 divided by a thousand is one or the other way around would be timesing by a thousand. So we've got a 200 milliamps, we want to convert it to amps, so we're gonna to have to divide by a thousand to get to amps. And if you divide it by a thousand, you're moving the decimal point one, two, three, so you get 0 0.2 amps. So now we have charge, 42 coulombs divided by 0 0.2 amps will give you 210 seconds, but it did say minutes. So 60 seconds to a minute, 210 divided by 60 will give you 3.5 minutes. Um, and that would explain how to answer that question for three marks. Remember where your marks came from. One from rearranging the equation, one from a unit conversion, and the other one for obviously getting the right answer. Calculate the total energy transferred by 6 volts of power supply when a charge of 42 coulombs flows through the resistor. So energy transferred, again, is potential difference times current times time. You can just find this on the back. You're looking for these three figures, voltage or potential difference, uh, charge and energy transfer. So uh, remember, charge is current times time. So current times time is charge. This is how it's at the back of the paper in the formula sheet, but you have to recognize that charge is current times time. So that's the tricky part here, knowing that this is the same as this. Um, so six times 42 is 252 joules. Once you figure this bit out, and that's the tough part, the rest is easy. Look out for these sort of, uh, what, what, these equations that can be summarized with a simpler thing. So for example, uh, know that weight is mass times gravitational field strength, charge is current times time, because in, in a question they might give you um, something like charge, but you need to relate to an equation which expands on that. This is actually a grade nine question, and it's designed for only the top, top science students in the country to get it right, which is kind of strange, um, but Apparently so. So the resistor becomes warm while there's a current in it. Explain why the resistor becomes warm. Now, this used to be a really standard question, which you'd used to answer like this. Electrons moving through the lattice or through the, uh, the wires will collide with cations, causing them to vibrate. Um, so this is a lattice. This is basically a lattice structure with these positive cations, the nuclei, positively charged nuclei of the metal in a regular arrangement. The reason why this is a grade nine is because of the way you have to explain it. So you have to say, 
there are collisions between electrons and cations in the lattice. So you have to use the term lattice, which a lot of people wouldn't think to do. And then you have to say the lattice vibrates more. So this whole structure starts to vibrate more and more, which, um, which causes it to warm up. Remember, temperature is really a measure of the kinetic energy in the particles or the average amount of kinetic energy in the particles. It may seem simple, but it's using this language here, lattice and lattice vibrates, and many people wouldn't do that. So this is why it's supposed to be targeted at grade eight, grade nine students. Um, next. Figure 16 shows a cardboard tube with a wire coming out from each end. There are two 10 ohm resistors inside the cardboard tube. A potential difference of 6 volts is connected between P and Q, so the voltage between this, and there's current of 1.2 amps in the wires. Deduce how the resistors have been arranged inside the cardboard tube. I quite like this question, it's like a big puzzle. Um, all right. So we know there are two resistors inside here. And what we've got to work out is, are they connected in series like this or are they connected in parallel like this? All right. And to do that, we have to do a bit of maths to figure this out. So we know in series it's really easy because you just add up the resistances um, in, in series. But in parallel, it's a little bit different. You have to use a slightly different formula. So. This isn't actually a formula you need to know for the exams, but it does help you figure it out. So one divided by the total resistance is equal to one divided by the resistance of the first resistor plus the uh, one divided by the resistance of the second resistor plus one divided by resistance of the third resistor if you were to add more and more in parallel. So let's try and firstly figure out, is this true? So does the total resistance add up to 20 ohms? If they're connected in series, it should add up to 20 ohms. So how do we work this out? Well, if we know that Ohm's law says voltage equals uh, current times resistance, then resistance equals voltage divided by current. You could do the 632 method to figure this out if you want. But right now I'm going to not do that because I've done it in other um, walkthroughs. Um, so 6 which is here, divided by current 1.2, is 5 ohms, all right? So we know instantly that isn't true. So you could actually just get the marks by working this one through and know that that can't be true because with these figures, we get 5 ohms, not 20 ohms, which is what we should get when resistors are connected in series. We just need to add up the resistances. So automatically, we know this is true. But if you wanted to understand why the other one's true, this is how you work it out. So firstly, 1 over the total resistance equals 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10, because the resistances are 1 over 10. 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1, so that will be 1 over the total resistance. So 1 over the total resistance is 0 0.2. So to work out the resistance, you can once again use the 632 method. We want to isolate, obviously, resistance here. So let's use the 632 method to work this out. So 6 divided by 3 equals 2. We want to work out this here, this value here, which is locked in. So how do we rearrange the others to get 3? You do 6 divided by 2. So in other words, you do 1 divided by 0 0.2 will give you RT. And if you do that, it equals 5 ohms. And so when you look back, you can see that marries up with our calculation using Ohm's law here. So this is true. So it's quite a nice puzzle question. But actually, to get full marks, you only need to work out this side to know that this one isn't true, therefore proving the other one must be 